All right, we're making some great progress. Um, as you can see, I have a little gold cutout I need to do to get to that bolt. Same thing over here. Uh, the doors are pretty aligned pretty well. There's enough adjustment that I could do some stuff. So we're going to cut this out. We're going to try to get these panels in, get the carpet finished, get the carpet finished, get this all kind of dialed in the way I want it, and uh, just start closing up this area. Uh, same thing for inside the trunk. Uh, Greg was really happy with the layout of the trunk, and so I'm going to solidify that, glue the carpet in, uh, get the panels in, seal it up, get that going. So there's actually a decent amount of work to do, uh, but as far as I know, there is nothing impeding us from moving forward. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. We need to clean up some polish every... <laughs> Every once in a while some polish will get through, but uh, need to clean up a few things. But yeah, so we're just going to keep going forward and see how we can pull this off.
So it's funny, uh, the last two nights, you know, I'm getting close to getting this car done and all I've been thinking about is rebuilding the i6 240 300 engine and all the research going into it. And I probably put like, I don't know, six to nine hours of research in the last few days on that project. And I'm like, hold on, I still got to finish this project. <laughs> I got to get through this one first. Stop thinking about the other one. And uh, I don't have any funds to do the other one anyways right at this moment because it's all sitting right here. So uh, so it's just been kind of crazy, but uh, I'm getting excited about rebuilding that i6 engine and uh, getting some, some meat and bones on that puppy where it's, it's really, you know, doing some justice on the road. So I've also been thinking about the uh, kingpins uh, because when I went to originally drive the van down to uh, the local uh, self spray wash place. I was kind of like downhill skiing 10 feet to the right, 10 feet to the left. It was a pretty crazy experience of like overcompensating and like, whoa, I'm just trying to go in a straight line. It was pretty, pretty intense. So I, you know, that might be something I could fix, you know, while I'm not doing anything else, you know, um, I was going to drop it off, but then I, I finally found a video that shows how to do it. I'm like, eh, maybe this ain't so big of a deal. So I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I'm also thinking about ways to tackle that project when it comes to what's the order of doing stuff. Do I pull the engine and the whole, you know, drivetrain first? And then while the engine's gone, I'm stripping the vehicle and then I get the vehicle, you know, taken care of and sandblasted and all that stuff, you know, media blasted, whatever. And uh, then I'm like, well, then I can't drive it to this and I can't do that. And it's like, well, I can't media blast if there's still cables on the car. And, you know, you just start thinking about, you know, what's the best way and opportunity to approach this. And of course, two years ago when we all had time and nothing going on, uh, I actually laid out all those plans and I had everything all ready to go. And so I'm kind of going back and just reacclimating to all that kind of stuff to kind of see where I'm at and what I need to do. And, you know, for the most part, there's no, can't really think of any research I'm doing to finish this car. Everything's kind of self-explanatory at this point. Um, so, and I like doing research. I mean, I spend too much time doing research, but I like learning things, so it's kind of cool. So I don't mind starting to learn for the next project and kind of see what's coming up. But I do want to pull some triggers on stuff in case like they ain't going to make it anymore, which a lot of stuff they don't make anymore anyways. But it's like, you know what? Just cool your guns, <laughs> kick back for a little bit, get this car finished. If you have to wait another month or so, like it's not a big deal. And uh, but at least I, I'm coming up with a plan of, you know, what I want, and how I want to do it. So so I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, we'll see what happens with with the old 66 van. So in any case, I'm going to hop back on here. I think I'm going to be able to just finish up the trunk today and then um, we'll keep moving on if I got time. And uh, I also bought some paint. So I have paint to get the inside edge of the whole grill uh, painted out black. So it just goes away. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just take it one one step at a time, see where it goes. Get out the trusty ruler. All right,
All right, I got the trunk finished. Got all our carpet in, looks great. Goes around the cables, goes around the cables. And uh, got the battery in, of course. That would scratch it if it was on top, so I just got this in here. Um, yeah, this is, this is pretty much good. Excited about that. Done, move on. That's that's my philosophy right now. Done and move on. So uh, we're gonna move on to the inside of the car. All right, well, it's pretty black. <laughs> Is black ever really black? Uh, you can see those are the spots for my seat. Um, yeah, it, it cleaned up pretty well. Um, probably need to take a lint roller and grab some of the little nuances, but for the most part, it's great. Um, yeah, knocked out. Two birds, one stone. Carpet night. Really happy about that. Um, where do we go from here? I guess the uh, next thing we do is make sure everything's set here. This door is a little tight, so I'm going to take that panel off and go in there and see if I need to make that a hair looser. This one's pretty loose. Um, I'm not sure if I want to tighten it though, because you got to remember I have door poppers and so we do need the car to, the doors to let loose when, when it opens up. So that's why I'm a little worried about the tight one. Not that you can't manually pull it open, but, um, it'll be easier without door handles to, to not have to pull it open. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, I'm going to kind of dig in and see what's going on with this door and then uh, kind of go from there. So I thought I was done, but I forgot I haven't mounted my uh, fire extinguisher yet. Whoa. So take our little fire extinguisher, go for a little
All right, so I got insulation in there. You know, insulating these areas is good and yes, kind of hokey at the same time because what about that gap? What about that gap? You know, it's, there's a big gap there too. Like, you know, it, it's silly. So I'm kind of doing it more for maybe a little bit of sound. Maybe it's going to do something. I mean, anything's better than nothing, right? But um, I also know that sound and heat will travel through any microscopic hole. So unless you have it hermetically sealed, sound's getting through. I know that for a fact. So in any case, uh, it's something. I got it in there. Um, do I really want to stuff the sides? No, because uh, it's a direct, like, you know, if you... If you look down in there, you could actually see, you know, almost like you're seeing light come through here. You could see light coming through there because it's the bottom of the car and it's not sealed down there either. So I'd rather keep stuff away from water, no corrosion, no mold, nothing like that. So I'm just putting everything on top. So originally I ordered the, they call it a top bulb and that was coming around this whole plate to seal it up. And I ordered it, and of course, you know, because of everything, you know, Factory 5 is like inundated and slow on shipping stuff out. So because of that, uh, when I finally got to this and saw, well, there's all these other air gaps and stuff anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I just chopped up a little bit of the top bulb that I had from the, the rear. I popped it on the corners because that's what's going to vibrate because it hits the body. And so now it's you know, shock absorbed, hitting the body, perfect, stuff the rest, call it a day, we're good. So, and then I canceled my order. So, yeah, so, man, we're getting getting pretty close here. So I think the next thing to do is grab my waterfall and just kind of see I would like to say how it fits, but I'm going to say how it doesn't fit because now that it has some kind of leather on it, it's not going to fit at all compared to how it fit before. So we're just going to have to see how it works. Um, but it's going to cover up all this stuff here. You're not going to see any of that. You might see that, but that will be behind the seat. So you're not going to see it anyways. So that's about it. And then, of course, the whole thing is leathered. And so I got to cut X's at every hole point uh, where there's a hole go through it, through it. So that is something else I got to do. So I'm just kind of get my, oh, bottom seat belts. I could do that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the bottom seat belts and then probably call it a night. And then I'll do the waterfall next time. So yeah, that's perfect. So let me do that. <laughs> 